happy spring, everybody. Hey, let's welcome our campuses joining us today. What's up, guys? Good to see you. I'm Pastor Tim, or if you're watching online, maybe you're not feeling well, you're on Facebook Live. However you're here, we're glad that uh, you're joining us for our churchwide small group series called Wind and Fire, uh, Encountering the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a special five-week series we've designed for the season of Lent. Everybody say Lent. Lent. It is this 40-day period on the Christian calendar that runs through Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday, and it's symbolic of the 40 days Jesus spent fasting in the desert. And it's typically a time where Christians engage in what I would call kind of spiritual spring cleaning. Uh, you know, it's like junk accumulates in our lives over time, junk attitudes, junk, you know, food, junk entertainment, and it kind of clogs our relationship with God. And so Lent is a time where we take out the garbage. We actually clear the clutter and we draw close to the Holy Spirit like Jesus did in the desert for 40 days to be spiritually strengthened to celebrate Easter. Now, for our Lenten series this year, we're uh, teaching and preaching about the, uh, God, the Holy Spirit. And last week, we encouraged you to do three things. First, we said, hey, get in a small group. And here's kind of fun news. We now have almost 90% of our church in small groups. Can we hear for that? That's awesome, man. So a lot of you are going to start meeting with other believers during the week for Bible study, prayer, fellowship. Um, it's how you go deeper in the Word. It's not too late to join a group today at your campus. We have one in your age of stage, so you can sign up after the, uh, today's service. And then get a study guide, um, which corresponds to our series. We have these beautiful uh, Bible study guides. I think they're five bucks out in the lobby today. And uh, beautiful research just to help you dig deeper in Bible study. And then I hope you're enjoying the daily devotionals. Um, each morning, what we did is we put together 40 days of free devotionals. So if you want to sign up for that, just text Wind and Fire to that number, and then you get devotional at 6 a.m. so you can kind of start your day and orient it by, uh, around God's Word. Now today, I want to talk about encountering the Holy Spirit. Um, we don't want to just learn about the Holy Spirit. We want to encounter Him. Amen? Amen. Louder. Amen? Amen? All right. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, there's this amazing promise in Romans 5, verse 5, I want to read this to, to orient us. It says, hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out where? Into our hearts through who? The Holy Spirit who has been given to us. If you said, Tim, what's the job description of the Holy Spirit? I think a lot of people would quickly talk about supernatural gifts, you know, signs, wonders, miracles, kind of the sensational stuff, revelation, prophecy, the spectacular stuff that makes headlines. But the Bible says the number one job of the Holy Spirit is what you just read in Romans 5. It's to pour out the love of God into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That is, the primary job of the Spirit is to make the Father's love real in the hearts of believers. And He pours it out in such a palpable way that you not only know God loves you in your head, you experience His love in your heart. Guys, this is the great promise of God for every man and woman who calls Christ king. It has happened to million, millions of Christians all around the globe. They've experienced the Father's love, and it can happen to you today. I want to start with a story about a, a guy uh, who lived in New York who had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. His name is Charles Finney, and the year is 1821. And Finney was a New York lawyer with no knowledge of Christianity. But he decided he had to read the Bible because so much of our legal system and law is based on the Bible. And so the more that Finney read, the more convinced he was of his sinfulness and need to get right with God, to be saved by Jesus. And so he went into the woods in upstate New York to pray. And here's how Finney described his encounter. Without any expectation of it, without ever having the thought in my mind that there was such a thing for me, the Holy Spirit descended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. I could feel the impression, like a wave of electricity going through and through me. Indeed, it seemed to come in waves and waves of liquid love, for I could not express it in any other way. How fun is that? Waves of liquid love. Now, Finney was writing in his journal at the time, and he said, it seemed like the very breath of God. I can recollect distinctly that it seemed to fan me like immense wings. You know, last week we learned that the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach, and it means the, the breath of God that fanned the flame with, with immense wings. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove on Jesus. Well, Finney was overcome. He collapsed, just weeping. 
And the Holy Spirit gave him a case of holy heartburn. Listen to his journal. No words can express the wonderful love that was shed abroad in my heart. I wept aloud with joy and love. I literally bellowed out the unutterable gushings of my heart. These waves came over me and over me and over me, one after the other until I cried out, I will die if these waves continue to pass over me. I said, Lord, I can't bear anymore. Yet I had no fear of death. Can I ask, have you ever experienced God that way? <laughs> like his love crashing like a set of waves over you? Like love, crash, joy, crash, peace, crash over your soul. Well, as Finney cried on the floor, a friend actually heard him weeping and rushed in and said, are you okay? Are you sick? Are you in pain? Are you dying? And Finney wrote this. I gathered myself up as best I could and replied, no, but I'm so happy that I cannot live. Friends, and so began the second great awakening, one of the most powerful movements of the Holy Spirit in human history. Finney began leading revival meetings, and revival spread like a wildfire up and down the East Coast. Hell-dipped pagans were baptized and converted by the thousands. Sleepy, dormant Christians were set ablaze with this kind of fresh revelation of, of their Father's love as the Spirit touched them in a personal way. You ask, who is the Holy Spirit? Put simply, the Holy Spirit is the felt presence of God. Let's say that together, the felt presence of God. The Spirit is a person. It's not a what, but it's a who. And his number one job is to testify to your heart in an experiential way that you are a blood-bought child of God, that you're saved by Christ's furious love, and you are dearly loved and embraced by your Abba in heaven. It happened to Charles Finney, and it can happen to you. Amen? Today, I want to share a message based in Romans chapter 8, and then invite you to receive a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit. Because we all need a fresh touch from God, don't we? I know I do. So let's pray, and then we'll, we'll dive in. Let's put our hands out. Father, we don't want to just learn about the Holy Spirit like some dusty topic in a textbook. We want to encounter him in a personal way. So right now, with fear and trembling, we actually pray, come, Holy Spirit. Fall fresh right now on your people as we open your word and discover the marvelous power of your saving love. Jesus, would you just right now even forgive the sins of the speaker, for they are many. Cleanse me, Lord. As I preach today, help me not to get in the way. Let it be your words that blaze like flame, and our hearts will melt like grass. In Jesus' name, the Spirit's power, everyone said? Amen. Amen. Hey, let's do this. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. Can we just honor God that way? All our campuses, just stand where you are. They did this in the Old Testament. They would stand for the reading of God's word. So let's do that. Romans 8, verses 14 and 15. And we'll put it up on the side screen. I want to read this seminal passage out loud, unison, big, loud voice. Ready? Here we go. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. You may be seated. You know, the Bible uses a lot of different names to describe God, and they're all important, but the name that you just called him out loud right here is most significant. Abba, Father, because it describes how God wants to relate to you. Now, that word Abba is Aramaic, and it means daddy or papa. It is not a Swedish musical group. <laughs> it was spoken in Jesus' original language. And that word Abba, it's like daddy. It describes the very close, intimate relationship of a father and his daughter or his son, as well as the very childlike trust that a young boy or a little girl puts in her daddy. You know, psychologists, child psychologists, tell us that the average baby begins to speak between the ages of 14 and 18 months. And the most common syllable around the world, regardless of gender, male or female, doesn't matter, 
The most common syllable that a baby speaks for the first time is da. 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 Da, da. Now, if you round the rewound the clock 2,000 years and went back to Palestine in the first century, a Jewish child speaking Aramaic, the language of Jesus, would say, Ab, Ab, Abba. So when Jesus taught his disciples to call God Abba or Daddy, it was revolutionary. Because up to that point in time in the Hebrew scriptures, the name of God was never even written out fully. Four consonants, Y-H-W-H, Yahweh, because it was thought God is the holy, immortal, infinite, distant, all-powerful one. And if an Orthodox Jew was caught saying or using God's full name, he was stoned to death because it was thought of as irreverent. No God-fearing Jew would dare to pray with such familiar terms as Abba, Daddy, would have been shocking. It was scandalous. Because Jesus was teaching his disciples, think about this, that the almighty creator of the cosmos, the God of such power in the Old Testament that he spoke the universe into existence, the God of such majesty that the sun has to look away from his radiance, the immortal God of such beauty that the Grand Canyon is a garbage dump by comparison, the infinite God who burns With the white-hot holiness of a thousand nuclear reactors, Jesus said, you may dare to address the transcendent, omnipotent, almighty God of the universe with baby talk. Ab, ab, abba. With the same intimacy, familiarity, and unshakable trust of a 16-month-old baby sitting on her daddy's lap. Senda. Da, daddy. Can I ask, do you relate to God that way? When you pray, do you know him as your Abba, your daddy? One of my favorite photos of my kids is their first day of elementary school. Yeah, they're, they're teens now, but they were cute once. <laughs> I love this picture. Because you can just see the joy right on all of our faces, right? You can see my you know, daddy's little girl with her gap tooth grin. You see my son over here practically squealing with delight. And you just see the love, right? And Abba pulling his kids close under my wings, close to my heart. Just reveling in the the love and affection we have for each other. And Jesus said, I want you to pray like that. My Abba, my daddy who delights over me. You got to know something. There is no other religion in the world that teaches its followers to call God Father other than Christianity. In Hinduism, despite the fact there's tens of millions of gods, none of them are called father. Islam has 99 noble names for Allah, but there's no mention of God. It's certainly not daddy. In fact, there's a wonderful book written by a prominent Muslim woman who became a follower of Christ, and she titled it, I Dared to Call Him Father. And that Muslim woman speaks about the life-changing discovery that she made of being able to have such an intimate relationship with God through Jesus that she could now call him Father. She said, all I'd known was fear in my culture. Fear of men, fear of fathers, fear of God. And she described her whole conversion in terms of being able to call God Daddy. You understand something? Jesus is the first and only religious teacher to ever personally call God my Abba, my Daddy. 175 times in the Gospels and then teach his followers to relate in the same way. So being a Christian is a lot more than, hey, I get to live with God in heaven after I die. Being a Christian means you have been adopted into God's family, and you can call God your Abba. The spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. So the Holy Spirit empowers you to experience the kind of daddy-daughter relationship the father-son dynamic that your soul has always longed for. Now, I realize in a crowd this size, that's difficult because there are many of you who maybe despair at the idea of relating to God as Abba. Maybe it's because your relationship with your earthly father was negative or non-existent. Maybe your daddy died when you were young. You never got to know him. 
Or maybe your parents got divorced and you, you seldom saw your father except in frequent visits here and there. Or maybe your dad was uh, an alcoholic. And, and, and as a kid, you remember his mood swings from anger to it frightened you. I don't know. Maybe your father was home every night but, but, but lived life by a simple belief. Spare the rod and you spoil the child. And there was physical abuse or verbal abuse or, God forbid, sexual abuse or simple neglect. Some of you right now can't even imagine that God would ever choose you and want to adopt you into his family and actually hold you and touch you. Because of your damaged relationship with your earthly father, you maybe can't imagine that. There's a wonderful book I can recommend to you by Brennan Manning. It's called Abba's Child. It's brought healing for a lot of people who struggle to embrace this idea of God as father. And Brennan tells the story of leading a spiritual retreat at which nuns were present. And after he finished speaking, people with hurts could come up for healing prayer. And when he was finished, it was past midnight. He didn't get to his room at the retreat till 1 o'clock. And Brennan says at 3 a.m., there's a knock on his door in a quiet, low voice. Brennan, can I speak with you? And he opened the door, and there stood a 78-year-old nun. He said, come on in, sister. And she came in, and she sat down. And she just began to weep. Whole body shaking, 78-year-old nun. Brennan said, do you want to talk about it, sister? She said, I never told anyone about this in my entire life. It started when I was five years old. He said, my father would crawl into my bed with no clothes on. And he would touch me there, and he would say, touch me here. And he said, it's what our family doctor wants us to do to get to know each other better. She said, when I was nine years old, my father took my virginity. And by the age of 12, I knew every sexual perversion that you could find in a dirty book. She said, Brendan, do you have any idea how filthy I feel? She said, I am filled with so much hatred for my father. And I'm filled with so much hatred of myself. I can only go to the communion table if no one's watching. And so Brennan prayed with her for inner healing, for Jesus to actually come and touch those wounded parts of her soul and bring healing to her heart. But then he said something strange. He said, Sister, would you be willing for six months to pray a special prayer? He said, every morning for the next six months, I want you to sit in a chair and close your eyes and turn your palms up I want you to pray this simple phrase over and over. Abba, I belong to you. Try it. Abba, I belong to you. It's a short prayer. It's a prayer of only seven syllables. Abba, I belong to you. And it's actually perfectly corresponds to the rhythm of your breathing. You inhale an Abba. Abba. And exhale, I belong to you. And as your mind actually aligns with your breathing, figuratively your head sinks into your heart and becomes what the French call a cri de cœur or cry of the heart. It's a heartfelt prayer from the depths of your being. Abba, I belong to you. Around which your whole identity is wrapped. You can actually pray it while driving your car, eating a meal, brushing your teeth when you're sick. Daddy Abba, Paul says, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Daddy, Father. And so the 78-year-old nun agreed to try it. So for the next six months, dozens and dozens of times, every single day, she began praying unceasingly, Abba, I belong to you, asking the Holy Spirit to make the Father's love real. Months later, Brennan received a deeply moving letter from the nun in which she said she experienced a miracle. Now, guys, I want you to get this. In her letter, she described the complete forgiveness of her father. 
the inner healing of her heart, an inner peace that she had never known. And she ended her letter this way. She wrote, a year ago, I would have signed this letter with my religious name, Sister Mary Gen Genevieve. But from now on, I'm just daddy's little girl. My friends, that is not sloppy sentimentality. That is a woman daring to relate to God with the simplicity and the childlike innocence and trust of a treasure child safe in her Abba's arms. And can I just say as your pastor, if that was your experience, my heart weeps, it breaks with you and for you. And you may never dream that kind of healing is possible. I understand that. But Romans 8 says, when you receive a spirit of adoption, a whole new dynamic defines a relationship with God. The spirit you receive doesn't make you slaves so that you live in what? Fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. Now the root of the Latin word adopt actually means to choose. It actually means I choose you. I pick you. I want that one. Notice adoption does not depend on your past. It has nothing to do with your future performance. It depends entirely on the choice of somebody else who sovereignly says, I love that one. It is based completely on unconditional love. Now, Paul was writing in Roman times. And in Roman times, to be adopted was like winning the lottery. Because if you were an orphan, you had no parents, you had no family, you had no future. You had no one to care for you. Your life was guaranteed abject poverty and rejection. Except, if a Roman father said, I choose her, I choose him, and he adopted you, whether you were boy or girl, you legally received all the rights and privileges of a firstborn son. And that's why Paul writes, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to what? Sonship. In other words, by virtue of adoption into God's family through faith in Christ, every man and woman, you enjoy the status of a firstborn son in Abba's family. In other words, you are daddy's little girl. Now, how does the spirit of adoption make that real to your heart? Because I told you that's the number one job of the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the felt presence of the Father's love. You ever wonder, like, what, Tim, what does that spirit of adoption feel like when it hits you in your heart? I want to show you a short video that went viral recently. It's of a little girl who was surprised by the gift of adoption. Her name is Ivy. This is her. You've been looking at her the whole time. She's 10 years old. And this is a Facebook video of the moment that her parents surprised her and let her know that they chose her and that she was being adopted into their forever family. All right, well, there's one more gift. We have one more it's gift. It's not for Grammy, but it's, yeah, it's um, another gift. Why don't you careful open it up. There we go. I want you to read it. I'm going to be adopted? We love you, sweetheart. Thank you. We'll always be your parents. I love you so much. I love you. We love you, sweetheart. We'll always be your parents. Okay? You're a, we'll always be your real family. We love you. God says, I want to give you a spirit of adoption. Those feels in your heart are not just for that little girl. Adoption is the Holy Spirit actually saying to your spirit, 
I choose you. I love you, and I want you forever. I believe God is saying to somebody's spirit right now, this is how I feel about you. The spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry what? Say it together, church. Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we really are what? God's children. Today, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will strike you in the heart with a fresh revelation. That's your primary identity in life. It's not male or female. It's not son or daughter. It's not mother or father. Your identity is not pastor or congregant. It's not blue collar or white collar. It's not teacher or designer or lawyer or truck driver. Your identity isn't waitress or student or executive. Your primary identity is you are a child of Abba. He is your father. From this moment on, may you forever be marked by a spirit of adoption. You have been saved by Christ. He died for you. When he was raised, he said, I will fill you now with my spirit and you belong to my Abba forever. That's how God knows you and that's how he wants you to relate to him. Not as a good father, not as a great father, as a perfect father. Something none of us have experienced. I had a great dad. He wasn't perfect. God says, oh, I am a listening father. I'm a generous father. I am a safe father. I'm a father who protects, a father who provides, a father who's tender and strong and gives you a security no earthly father can ever give you. Because God is Abba, you now by rights have unlimited access to the infinite affection of your daddy God. Waves and waves of liquid love, that's what Abba has stored out for you. Does that sound too good to be true? If so, you're just beginning to get it. It's called grace. There's a guy in Brooklyn. His name's Mike Turrigiano. He's a vineyard pastor. And he, oh, all right, all right. Is Mike here? Mom's, Mike's dad's here. Okay, awesome. He, uh, <laughs> he's a vineyard church, and he calls it the big hug. Everybody say the big hug. And he says every Christian needs to experience the big hug or he or she will stay spiritually stuck, insecure, and incomplete. You can be saved, but you can still walk around insecure and incomplete and living out of all those wounds. And in his book, Turrigiano writes this. He says, he was a pastor. Even though I had been following Jesus for quite some time, I had not come to know my loving Father in heaven. The tender affection of a father's love was missing in my life, which left me insecure, angry, and defensive. Well, on a retreat with men that I trusted, one looked straight at me and said, Mike, you need the blessing of your heavenly father. And he began praying that I'd receive the spirit of adoption. As he prayed, I began experiencing something powerful yet intimate. It was like God was breathing into me, invading a part of me that had never been touched before. A warm presence began flooding me. I was being held by a love that my earthly father could never give me. And in that moment, I felt like a son, not just a servant. It was overwhelming. It was wonderful. I was receiving the big hug I had always longed for, the warmth of the father's love. My heart was finally at rest. I felt safe and secure. I love that. The big hug. That's the Holy Spirit at work ministering the felt presence of the Father in the heart of a son or daughter of God. And it changes everything. Because you don't go through life as a fearful servant anymore, but as a favored son. Until you have your core identity rooted as Abba's child, let me just tell you, you will limp along in the Christian life struggling with insecurity, with anxiety, with this low-lying cloud of guilt and shame for your past. In fact, I dare say the root cause of 99% of our spiritual problems lies in our ability to trust God like our loving Abba the way Jesus trusted him. Jesus lived, his whole life was anchored in the love of Abba. Jesus said, for the Father loves the Son. That's where his security came from, his power. It's not the opinions of people, but it was the love of his daddy in heaven. 
Did you know there are thousands of believers, sincere Christians, people who are saved, followers of Jesus, who are saved but never known Abba's love experientially? What I mean is this. Intellectually, they understand. Like, you may know in your head, God is loving. God loves me. Well, he kind of has to. You know it in your head, but you've never felt it in your heart. Abba's my daddy. You've never experienced the big hug. Turijano says, looking back, I can point to that experience as the beginning of a process of gradually moving from being an insecure, impulsive, and angry servant to becoming a son and eventually a spiritual father to my church. Guys, that can happen to you. The Holy Spirit is here. He stands ready and willing to pour out the love of the Father into your heart today. All you have to do is ask. That's the promise. Let's read it again. I want to read this. Look at it with your spiritual eyes. God's love, read it, has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to you. The Holy Spirit can touch you in a supernatural way that you know in your knower that you are loved and accepted. You can have an experience of the Father like Jesus had at his baptism. Do you remember? He comes out of the wilderness, 40 days of Lent, and he goes, gets baptized and heaven opens and the Father says, Son, I love you. This is my boy. You are a source of delight and pleasure for me. And the spirit descended like a dove. And Jesus was marked forever for ministry. The big hug is when the spirit invades a believer's being. And listen to me. You are suddenly not just aware of the fact that Christ died for you. You realize it's not because of anything I've done or do. It's just because of who God is. And you're no longer just aware of the fact. You're awash in the love of God. The joy of Jesus washes and spills over your heart. Rivers of living water will pour from anybody who believes this. It's like Finney said, waves and waves of liquid love just started flooding my soul. Sound too good to be true? You're just starting to get it. <laughs> I've had this happen myself. A few weeks ago, actually, I was walking in the woods behind my house, just walking and praying out loud. I put on my Worship playlist, I kind of go in the woods, I got my earbuds on. I just, I love being outdoors. That's where I get my worship on. I feel close to Abba. And right there in the woods behind my house, I'm just walking and singing my father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Daddy, I, do you have anything you want to say to me? Because I'm always talking to him. And I had this overwhelming sense of the Spirit saying, Timmy, you're my boy. Now, God calls me Timmy. You can't call me Timmy, okay? I just clarify this. I felt like God saying, Timmy, I love you. There's no one else on earth like you. And here's what I love. I love how you surrender and stay tender towards my spirit. Guys, I just, I can't even really explain it to you, but like, I'm just, this sense that the author of the universe, the Alpha Omega is my daddy. It's like this love came into my heart because I had this sense it had nothing to do with what I do for God. I love you, Timmy, not as a pastor, not as a speaker, not as an author, but as a little boy. Abba's love like literally knocked me to the ground. I literally, I was on the ground with my arms out like this, middle of the woods. People walking their dogs were probably like, that guy's having a heart attack. <laughs> it, was, it was, but I could feel it. You ever have that moment? You feel Abba's arms wrapping around you. I came to tell somebody today what happened to Jesus, what happened to Fiddy, what happened to me can happen to you through the Holy Spirit. You have to receive a spirit of adoption. If you don't have it, you cry out for it. By him we cry, Abba, Daddy, Father. Notice Paul's language is vivid. It's emotional. It is a cry, a cri de cure, a heart cry. It's intimate. It's intense. Now, I know, I know what some of you are thinking. The cynics in the room are like, really? <laughs> There's Pharisees in every church. It just is. It just is. It's the way it goes. Really, Tim? The big hug? Okay. Okay. <laughs> right? Because I know some Christians are often, you know, will say, I grew up in church like this, where it's like, forget about feelings, Okay. Don't worry if you've never felt God's presence. The truth is enough. 
Forget about your feelings. And you know what? Let me just say, on one hand, that's partly right. Yeah. The truth is you don't have to wait for a feeling to know Jesus died for your sins and God's forgiven you. You don't have to feel it to obey God in his will regardless of your feelings. But let me just say this. On the other hand, if you're here today and you've never felt or rarely feel God's presence in your heart, can I just gently suggest something may be wrong in your relationship with God? I mean, think of your relationship with God like a great marriage. I'll give you an example. Imagine I came home one night after work and said to my wife, Colleen, Colleen, our marriage of 21 years, I just want you to know, is not based on feelings. (laughs) Our marriage is based strictly on fact. So you should know, sweetheart, that when I hug you, I feel absolutely nothing. When we cuddle up and spoon at night, I'm stone cold dead inside. (laughs) Honey, I am rationally, indifferently, dispassionately in love with you. (laughs) Now come here for a kiss, right? You'd say, oh man, something's wrong with that relationship, right? God wants you to feel his love. He wants to touch you. He wants you to experience his affection. I understand we're all wired differently. I get it. Some of us are more emotional than others. But no matter how you're wired, the Holy Spirit can help you feel the love of God palpably. It's not something you gin up. It's a sovereign work of the Holy Spirit. You can experience Abba's embrace, the big hug. You just have to ask the Holy Spirit. Can I just like even ask you right now, like in your spirit, as I've been talking, is something you want to cry out, Abba, Father, because something in my soul does. Every day, I need a fresh touch of God's power. I need a fresh filling of his presence. So we're going to clear some space for you to experience that. In a few minutes, we're going to actually play some worship music. And you can invite the Holy Spirit to touch you today so that you can experience the spirit of adoption. I want you to listen to me. Even a person with a traumatized, abusive background can experience the felt presence of her father's love. In fact, I'll tell you this. The Holy Spirit specializes in pouring out Abba's love into the hearts of those who feel broken. If you've ever felt abandoned or abused, rejected or worthless, God will pour out his love into your heart that is supernatural. And you'll know it's the touch of God because no man, no counselor, no doctor can do this. You ready to encounter the Holy Spirit? Anybody else need a free, fresh touch right now from, from Abba? Here's what I want to do. I want to have a little prayer time. Some churches, when they say it's Holy Spirit time, they hype you up. At Liquid, we're going to dial you down. Because it's not about emotionalism. It's about an open heart. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Would you just open your hands? I want you to dial down, close your eyes, and just kind of tune out everyone else around you. We're just in a posture of receiving. Silence is okay. Okay. Holy Spirit, come. In faith, in your mind's eye, I want you to become aware of Jesus living in you through the Holy Spirit. Hear his words in John 14. Jesus said, all who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them. And we will come and make our home with each of them. This is a sacred moment. The love of Abba is going to pour out into some of your hearts right now in a new way. Where is your father right now? Your father God is not out there in space as a distant creator of the cosmos. He is dwelling deep within you. In your mind's eye, I want you to crawl up into his lap 
just become like a little child. Abba. Look into his eyes. They're full of love and affection like you've never seen. And listen as he tells you, you are my daughter. I delight in you. You're my beloved son. I love you with all my being. Let's pray those seven words. Abba, I belong to you. Just keep your hands out. Let's just pray them. Abba, I belong to you. You have nothing to be afraid of. Jesus is here. Take a breath. Abba, I belong to you. Just let your breathing match your prayer. Abba, I belong to you. Like a little child's cry from the heart. Abba, I belong to you. Just pray it. Abba, I belong to you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Right now, over your children, Lord, you're singing. Holy Spirit, come. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would pour out the Father's love again and again and again on her. Lord, my sister over here, just touch her. Heal her, Lord. Heal her insecurities. Over here, just speak your truth over the lies. Father God, she is a daughter of God. Receive the spirit of adoption. You're no longer a slave to fear, young man. You are a child of God. Touch my brother right now with the warmth of your fatherly affection. Let him feel it, Lord. Just pour it on him. We ask you for more, Holy Spirit. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Deeper revelation right now of the Father coming from the Holy Spirit. Bring them into the presence of their Abba. No longer slaves, sons and daughters of the living God. Abba, I belong to you. We're going to move a little deeper right now. And I want to talk to people right now who are here and you're not a Christian. I want to let you know today is adoption day. It is time to come home. And join God's forever family through faith in Christ. We're still praying. Let's receive this. If you're a spiritual orphan, I want you to hear this from God. I love you. You are wanted. I chose you. I knit you together in your mother's womb. And I named you. And God is going to set you in a family today. No matter what you've done or what you're going through. He wants to be your father. That's why I sent his son Jesus. Romans 5.8 says, God demonstrated his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. This is no earthly love. Look at the cross. How much does God love you? He gives up his son to die in your place so you can become his son or daughter. You understand? The love of God is not a feeling in the heart. It's a fact rooted in history. The death and resurrection of Jesus. What father gives up his son to save a sinner like you? Abba. So right now understand that God loves you not because of what you do, but what Jesus did for you on that cross. Christ would have died for you if you were the only person left in the world. That's how much your daddy wants to adopt you and his family today. So if you're ready to be adopted into God's family. I want you to stand up right now where you are. Go ahead, just stand up. God's been speaking to you, touching you. You have that desire in your heart. Don't quench it. Just stand up. It's beautiful. Praise God. Praise God for you. All our campuses, wherever you are, just stand up. You want to receive that. I'm going to lead you in a salvation prayer. Ah, but I belong to you. Just stand up. Praise God. Would you reach out your hands towards people who are standing up? We're praying for them. We're going to be welcoming them into our church family. 
I want you to pray these words out loud and they're not magic. Just let them come out of your being. Pray with me. Just say, Abba, Father, I'm coming home today. Thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Forgive my sins. I, I turn from them now. I want a new life, a new future as your son or daughter. Cleanse me from the inside out and now fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, pour out your Holy Spirit on men and women as their names are written in your book of life. They have been adopted into the family of God. The Holy Spirit is in them. They will never be the same. From this moment on, they are living free with no fear. We live in an age of coronavirus. You live now with a spirit of faith and love and a sound mind. Father God, I pray that you'll pour it out on them. And for my brothers and sisters right now, who have never felt the love of Abba, you stand too. Stand on up. Stand up. The Holy Spirit's ministering to people. Just stand up. Father, right now, on my sister over here, pour it down into her heart. Heal those wounds. My brother over here, he's going to be marked by the Spirit of God. He's going to be a father in Jesus' name. These women, Lord, these three women right now, I pray, God, would you use them in a powerful way that through their lives more people would know the love of Abba because of the change that takes place in their life. We're inviting the Holy Spirit. Let's all stand up. Come on, stand up. We're just going to keep worshiping God. Let's keep worshiping our Father like we're in the woods alone. We worship you, Abba. Praise him, church, to say, Abba, I belong to you. Abba, we belong to you.